Hi guys, today I am joined by Shady, Dr. Shadi Arafage, who is the Chief Medical Officer at Vet Triage and has his Bachelor's Degree in Science in Biology and his DVM and his DACVS. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. So my first question, Dr. Arafage, um, currently what do you work on and where do you work in it? I mean, where do you work at? So in the beginning of the uh, pandemic, uh, it just so happened to coincide with me leaving my uh, specialty in emergency hospital in Los Angeles, California. And I, I've been in, this, in the process of the past two to three years working with my partner on developing a veterinary telemedicine company. And it just so happened that COVID was beginning at the same time my career was changing from my Los Angeles hospital to whatever was next for me. So we decided to launch vet triage in the beginning of this year irrelevant of covid it just so happened to work out that way and so now i don't work in a brick and mortar facility anymore i work exclusively on telemedicine from my own home this is my my office and that's what i do now 24 7. my primary goal is to reach as many pets around the world that i can with telemedicine as well as giving veterinarians a better quality of life professionally and hoping long term we can change the restricted telemedicine laws that are currently in existence. Well, that's a lot of great stuff that you were just listing for me. Um, can you explain what telemedicine is for my guests? I mean, for my audience, sorry. Of course. So telemedicine is actually, um, I would say almost inappropriate to say because it's actually considered one branch of a broader category, which is called telehealth. So telehealth is the main overarching name for this type of medicine. And then it's broken down to different components. Telemedicine is one of those components. Everybody uses the word telemedicine kind of nonchalantly. That's sort of the layman's term for it. And it's become mainstream, as you can tell since the pandemic began. But telemedicine is one of many different categories. So there's different categories underneath telehealth besides telemedicine. There's teleadvice, teletriage, teleconsulting, telepractice, teleprescribing, there's a variety of things. And so we try to, because the laws are so restricted on our end, we try to live in the world of teletriage. So legally, I'm allowed to perform telemedicine, so to speak, if it's an emergency setting under the presumption that you're gonna be triaging patients. So what triage is, it's when you go to, let's say a hospital and you show up with 10 other people at a human hospital, they have to figure out, because there's 10 of you at the same time, who is the sickest and who's the least sickest. And that way they know who they should see first. And of course, they want to see the sickest ones first. So our job is to, as veterinarians, using teletriage on vet triage to figure out, is your pet experiencing an emergency that warrants immediate care? Or can you wait for your veterinarian to open again tomorrow or next week? So telemedicine is one branch of a broader category of telehealth. And we live in the branch of teletriage underneath that telehealth umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how effective have you found it to be? It has been absolutely a game changer. Um, first of all, the veterinarians that work on, uh, on vet triage alongside me, they've got a better quality of life now. They can work from home, make their own hours. Because we're 24 seven, they can hop on the system, hop off the system whenever they, they please. So for them, it's a great quality of life. They don't spend hours after their shift writing up paperwork. There's no follow-up testing after they're done with their shift to follow up with pet owners. They can just sign in, work however many hours they want, and sign off. So for them, it's great. For pet owners, now that COVID is a thing, there have been a variety of reasons why pet owners utilize us, everything from just pure convenience to they are immunocompromised people that don't want to endanger themselves to people who live in the middle of nowhere, like really rural areas where there's no veterinarian for hours or even a plane ride away. There's a variety of reasons why people utilize us. So it's become, it's come, it's become really a blessing for pet owners that are just stuck. They need veterinary advice. They don't know where they should go, what they should do. And they want to make sure that, sh that they have to go to an emergency hospital that it's actually warranted. So it saves them money, it saves them time. It gives them peace of mind and, and insurance. On top of that, there's an ongoing issue where you have really busy hospitals, like 24 hour emergency hospitals that are backed up. And so what they'll do is they'll use vet triage to try and screen those patients before they come in. That way the more serious ones get seen by the hospital. And the ones that are less severe that can be managed at home until the veterinarian is open again, vet triage will take care of those pets. 
And is there any advice for pet owners if they need to have a meeting with a veterinarian? Absolutely. So there's, there's actually I lots of advice for those folks. There are situations where telemedicine will never be able to replace your typical hospital setting. There's no way that I can give vaccines to your pet. I can't do surgery on your pet. I can't do blood work. So in those cases where those, those parameters are obvious, pet owners should just consult with a veterinarian in a brick and mortar facility and actually in-person veterinarian through an appointment or through a walk-in basis at an emergency hospital. For those cases, however, where the pet owner is not sure if the emergency they're seeing, or rather the medical condition they're seeing with their pet is a true emergency, telemedicine, like my company, Vet Triage, works profoundly well for them. I also added another subset of clients that we haven't talked about yet, which is rescue organizations. Rescue organizations, their bottom line is budget. They only have a certain amount of money they can allocate to sick pets and to finding fosters foster owners for those pets before they get adopted somewhere. So they'll use vet triage when they have an emergency to see whether or not they should spend the money on an emergency clinic or if they can be taken care of at home or with the shelter the next day when they reopen. Mm -hmm. And are there some common steps and guidelines when you first go into like a meeting with them? It, on, on vet triage? Yeah. Yeah, so um, because we don't know what pet or what medical condition we're going to see, we don't know if we're going to see a rabbit, a lizard, a bird, a dog, or a cat, a horse, fish. We've seen all these different types of animals and many more. Um, pet owners are encouraged to just be ready to have a veterinarian pop up on their screen literally within two minutes. It's not a very long wait time. And have the pet with them, have their information ready, have any current pet owners who, who take care of that pet simultaneously involved with the conversation and that way we can make the most out of our time. On vet triage, the cost of the client doesn't change and the quality of the session doesn't change no matter how long you spend with the doctor. But we do wanna make sure that you get taken care of quickly and efficiently. So I advise pet owners when they sign on, have your pet ready, have any medical documents you have ready, have all the pet owners involved ready and that way we can have a, an, an efficient and informative session. Mm -hmm. And more back to you, do you specialize in any different species or have more knowledge or experience in a certain type of animal? I've been a veterinarian for 14 years. I graduated from Cornell University in 2006. And since then, I've become a board certified veterinary surgeon. I am, I am more comfortable with dogs and cats. That, that's been my entire career. However, over time, as a surgeon, I perform surgery on rabbits, chinchillas, sugar gliders, pigs. There's a variety of species that I dabbled with. I am by no means an expert in those species, but no veterinarian is an expert in all the species. We typically will pick one or more species that we want to specialize in, and the remainder of those pets end up going to another doctor who is more familiar. So for example, I've never treated a giraffe before or a lion or a marine animal. So on vet triage, however, because we never know what pet we're going to receive, my veterinarians, including myself, are well equipped to either find information that we need on that particular species, even if we're not comfortable with that species, or we have the ability to do research or contact other colleagues and give the owner a call back, the pet owner a call back, to, so we have more information. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, it's all about triage. We wanna make sure that your goldfish or squirrel or turkey or chicken can, can wait to be seen by a veterinarian in person or whether it's an emergency that needs to be handled that night. So we actually are becoming more and more educated on the different species, and that includes myself as well. Even with my, all my experience, I'm still learning about the different species as they come on the computer screen. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me about some of the common conditions you see across the different species of animals? Absolutely. I would say that they, it almost weirdly enough, they come in trends. So for example, I'll have a trend of dogs and cats that have skin related problems, skin infections, allergies, ringworm, bacterial infections. And, and that's a, a, the vast majority of what I'll see. I would say probably a close second are gastrointestinal issues. Dogs and cats that have vomiting or diarrhea, they're not eating, they have abdominal pain, lethargic. After that, I would say probably number three is going to be urinary issues, mostly urinary tract infections. So we suspect because obviously on bed track, we can't run any tests. 
So it goes probably skin conditions, then gastrointestinal, and then a distant third, urinary. After that, you see a scattered number of emergencies, everything from uh, traumas, like spraining a joint or falling out of a window or getting hit by a car or roughhousing. You see ocular issues, eye diseases, quite commonly as well, but not as commonly those top three. And I would say probably out of all the cases we see in the latest um, in the latest statistics that I've ran on my on my uh, on our almost almost 2,000 cases now, I would say about 80% of them are conditions that can wait for the veterinarian to open again the next day. About 20% of those cases have to go to emergency hospital immediately. Mm-hmm. And some of those cases, have you ever seen where the animal that needs treatment needs it um, at the moment when they are in the session? on vet triage it's it's crazy how when you sign on within the first 10 seconds of looking at the pet you know this pet needs help right now like their condition is life-threatening and they need immediate intervention immediate and so in those cases myself and my doctors know to just stop asking questions tell the pet owner you have an obvious emergency it looks like it may be heart failure pneumonia whatever it is we need to get to a hospital immediately. We're not gonna ask you any more questions. If that pet owner is unfamiliar with a nearby emergency hospital, my doctors will actually look up for them the nearest two or three emergency hospitals that are open 24 seven and get them the help they need. That way the pet owner can focus on grabbing their pet, grabbing any medications or pet is on and grabbing any medical records, get into the car, by the time they're in the car, they should have my email with a few addresses on there. They can just copy and paste into their navigation and then go on their way. So we try to make the process very efficient for them. But yes, there are certainly times where it gets very scary where the moments of, in some cases, life and death are only minutes away. And we gotta get those, those pests to seek emergency care immediately. Well, thank you so much for telling me all this stuff. Um, and again, I was joined by Dr. Shadi Irafej, who is a Chief Medical Officer at Vet Triage. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Zeph. Mm-hmm.